In this video, I'm going to share a few tips to help you get the most out of my mosaic maker for Illustrator. The pack was made by some genuine Roman mosaic tiles and it features a whole host of patterns and brushes. You'll find a variety of brushes in the pack, from standard square tile brushes to more interesting things like hexes and diagonal slants and dots. I'd recommend using the square tiles to create the bulk of your design and use the unusual shape tiles to add additional details later. To demonstrate I'm going to create a very simple circle design and as you can see I'm starting with a vector stroke which I'm going to select and I'm going to turn this into a tile border and all I do is simply click on one of the brushes from the tab like so and as you can see the tiles are instantly applied. The default colour of the brush stroke is black but you can change it to any colour you like by changing the colour sliders here or by clicking on a swatch which I'm going to do. If you want to make your tile border thicker or thinner simply adjust the stroke weight here so we can have a really fat one or go down to a really thin one there. Next I'm going to show you how to fill the centre of the circle with tiles as well. Now there are two ways to do this. There's a simple way which is to fill it using one of the uh, texture patterns which I've supplied and the second way is to fill the area with brush strokes. I'll first explain how to fill it with a texture pattern. To do this, I'm going to create a slightly smaller circle that sits just inside this border. And the best way to do that is to create an offset path. And to do that, simply select your existing path here and go to the object menu and then to path and offset path. Now, if you want to create a circle that's smaller than the existing circle, you'll need it to be a negative number in this offset box here. If you want it to be a larger circle, make it a positive number. So I'm going to click the preview button here, and as you can see, it comes just inside. We want it to be a little smaller than that. So we'll click on 11 points. And we don't want the edge to have the brushes on it, so we'll go back to the brushes tab and we'll click on a basic stroke there. Then I'm going to set the stroke to no colour. Now it's time to add the pattern. All you do, making sure you have your shape selected, go to the swatches tab and simply click on one of the patterns like so. And as you can see, the area is instantly flooded with tiles. Nice and easy. As I said, the second option is to fill the circle with brush strokes. And so I'm going to demonstrate that now. And firstly, I'm going to use the line tool just to create a horizontal line. Um, as you click with the line tool, if you hold down the shift key, your line will remain horizontal. So what I'm going to do is with the line selected, just click on a brush like so. And as you can see, there it is. Now, I want to duplicate this line multiple times to fill up the space. Um, and the quickest way to do this is to select the line, hold down the Alt key, and drag, and you get multiple versions just appearing like so. As you can see, these lines of tiles are fairly unevenly placed. So we're going to use the Align tab to correct this. You'll find that in the Windows menu here. And you'll also find a repeat of it in the Options bar at the top of your screen. So to use it, we're just going to select all of the lines here and then click on Vertical Distribute Center, like so. And as you can see, it instantly distributes each line with an even spacing. Now I think the gaps between the strokes may be a little large, so to correct that I'm going to adjust the stroke weight very slightly, and as you see it closes up the gap. And although we wanted to place these evenly, we, they do look a little unrealistic because they are too even, and when you look at real mosaics they have lots of variation. So the easy way to do this is to just select a few of the strokes and then click 
on another brush. Because I've supplied varying numbers of tiles within each brush and they're all different shapes, so simply just change them like so. To further add to that, I'm going to select every other line and shift it very slightly. Now it's time to crop the brush strokes and to make it a little easier I have dragged the uh, horizontal strokes onto a new layer which is below the outline stroke at the top. And in order to crop the strokes we need to create another offset path like I did at the beginning. So we're selecting the border stroke again and going to object, path, an offset path and 11 points should just about do it as it did before and click OK and then I'm going to clear the brush so that it's just an outline. So to crop it we're going to select this new stroke which you'll notice is above the horizontal lines in the stacking order and that's very important and then we're going to select all of the horizontal lines by selecting the entire contents of layer 2 by clicking there and then we go to object clipping mask and make and now I'm going to show you how to add some grout and to do this I'm going to create another offset path again based on this original circle but this time it will be a slightly bigger circle so I'll go to object path offset path if we go to 11 rather than minus 11 that should hopefully be about right and again I'm going to set the brush to nothing and turn that to transparent and then I'm going to select the colour for the grout as you can see all of the brush strokes now show up really really well there's one slight issue with this and that is that at the moment it looks a little unnaturalistic so I'm going to add a roughened edge to the grout and to do that I'm just going to select the circle and I'm going to go to effect distort and transform and roughen and it's only going to be a very subtle roughen so I'm going to do it at 1% and I can click absolute I want it to be a smooth roughen and I'll try 16 in detail and if we click the preview it's maybe a little too subtle so we'll try making it a little larger and as you can see now we have a nicely undulating edge and we can also add that to the clipping path here as well to do this we'll select the clipping path by clicking on it on the layers tab and again we'll go to effect and roughen and use the same settings and click OK. And as you can see it just adds that little bit of realism. The final tip that I'm going to give you makes all the difference when making your illustrations look realistic and that is when you have large blocks of the same colour vary the colour very slightly and there are two methods of doing this and the first one is to expand all of your brush strokes so that they're just normal vectors and you do this by going to object and expand appearance as you can see now we just have individual vectors that you can just recolor as you like I'm just going to demonstrate selecting a few and then just recoloring them and this is not my chosen way of doing things in that you can't then use them as brushes anymore they're just normal vectors so I'm going to show you a different method dividing your horizontal lines of tiles into shorter lines and then recoloring them so we're going to use the scissors tool and you'll find that underneath the eraser there and all you do is just click where you want to cut on the line
Now as you can see, lots of the brushes look quite compressed. This is because I've used the, the five tile brush. So this is now a tiny little path here and it's trying to fit five tiles on one stroke, which obviously it can't do. This is why I've supplied a whole load of different number of tile brushes. So to correct that, we just change it to one tile or to four tiles. Actually, three would look better there. So now that you have lots of different sized groups of tiles, it's very easy to just select a load of them, like so, and just change the color. As you can see, this makes a huge difference um, when considering how authentic it looks. And I've also just removed a few tiles because um, I really think that adds to the look as well. And that's it. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or send me an email. Thank you for watching.